We're Steve and Audra. We're converting our 2019 Ford Transit high roof cargo van into a traveling home on wheels, focusing on being creative and resourceful with materials. So far, we've shared the installation of our subfloor, max air roof fan, wall insulation, and sleeping area. If you've missed any of the progress, we invite you to check out some of our past videos. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss future episodes. Insulation is probably one of the most controversial topics in van life. Follow along today as we show you the choices we made for insulating the ceiling and prepare it for finishing touches. I started working on a dry fit of the framework that we'll use later for securing the finishing wood to the ceiling. I used plus nuts in the existing factory holes to attach plywood strips to the ribs of the ceiling. If you aren't familiar with plus nuts, check out our earlier bed platform video where I talk more about them. I used scrap pieces of wood running perpendicular between the plywood strips so I could run additional support. This will give us space for insulation and a place in which to attach the ceiling wood. After I had all the pieces up, I took it all down to make it easier to install the insulation. While Steve was busy working on other things, I tried my hand at putting up some of the polyiso insulation. For the ceiling insulation, we're using a combination of materials. Polyiso foam board, which we rescued from a dumpster at a construction site, spray foam, and Havelock wool. Insulation can be quite an in-depth topic. If you're interested in why we chose these materials, see the video description where we provide some notes and resources on the topic. I cut and glued up pieces for a whole section. We seem to be having a hard time with spray adhesive, even though we've been using what others have recommended. We're wondering if it's because we live in South Florida where temperatures and humidity are so high and the sun beats down all day on the roof. Perhaps the weather conditions are preventing the adhesive from curing properly? Or perhaps I had cut the pieces too big for the curvature of the transit. I had hoped to put up pieces a few at a time so it wasn't a marathon project. But instead, we've realized we'll have to do it all at once and immediately spray foam insulation between the cracks with the hope that that'll be enough to keep everything in place once it's all up. Because what I did this first time around definitely didn't work. The pieces fell down one by one. So, fast forward over a month. Here we go again, round two. We started measuring and cutting all the pieces for the ceiling. Math is hard. With the curve of the ceiling and all the ridges, we decided cutting the polyiso into smaller pieces might adhere better because they'd fit the contours better. We also numbered each piece to keep track of which piece went where. Next, we attached the polyiso pieces one section at a time. For each section, we sprayed the van roof and the insulation piece with 3M Super 77 multi-purpose adhesive, being very careful that we had good ventilation and our faces covered to help avoid inhalation. Once each piece was set up, we put in supports to hold it in place. We had to get creative, using all sorts of materials for supports. This time, we left the supports in place and immediately sprayed the foam insulation between the cracks of the polyiso insulation. Doing the spray foam was challenging. It didn't always come out smoothly, so application required a lot of patience. But I actually really enjoyed it. There was something satisfying about watching the foam expand to fill the spaces. And I always like a good challenge. Spray foam is super messy. We learned from others that if it drips on something, just leave it until it dries and then it'll pop right off. But if you try to clean it while it's wet, it'll just smear everywhere. And we like to think we're not slop jockeys. The spray foam cans are only good for one use, so we also filled in some of the ribs of the roof and other spots that are too small and difficult to access with wool. The foam designed for larger areas didn't seem to work well, and it seemed like a waste of materials, so we opted to fill the ribs with Havelock wool. It's super easy to work with. A few reasons we chose wool insulation is that it is all natural, renewable, sustainable, 
has a good R value, resists fire, suppresses mold and mildew, and installs easily. You'll see us using more wool insulation in the next episode. smells like sheep. We discovered this little guy in the cinder block after we brought it into the van. He's now part of the uh, support system for holding up the insulation even though he doesn't realize it. There he is. So we'll have to be careful of him and put him back outside soon. It's like stalactites and stalagmites. I forget which come from the top and which come from the bottom, but one of those. Once the foam had set up, we removed the supports and started trimming off the excess spray foam with a saw blade. There were definitely some areas where we had been too liberal when spraying the foam, but it's hard to tell when filling a cavity with almost zero visibility how much is enough since it expands after application. We hope you have found this episode interesting or helpful. If so, please click that like button. Make sure to subscribe, click that notification bell, and tune in for next week's episode. What we think will be the most exciting part of the build so far. See you next time.